Basically, you know, we had a president, Dick Seyert, Dick at Carnegie Mellon, and uh, he convened a meeting saying, hey, I came from Washington, D.C. There's a lot of concern that Japanese are eating our lunch and uh, with robotics, this, that, and the other. Do we have anything to show for, you know, in that area? And um, so I was there, and Noel was there, and uh, Joe Traub was the head of the department and um, was there and so on. We said we are doing robotics, you know, uh, and uh, we, we, uh, various things, uh, vision and speech and so on. But the scale at which we are doing is very small. We are spending maybe a million dollars a year. We should be spending ten to a hundred million dollars a year to if to have real impact on the world. Uh, so he, what he did was um, contacted the head of you know of Westinghouse. At that point, it was still one major corporation, and uh, so Tom Murren who was kind of number two or number three, uh, was put in charge of working out what might be done. And so Tom, after listening to my presentation, gave us $5 million for five years, uh, sight unseen, no proposal, nothing. And we got a similar amount of money from Admiral Bachoko of ONR. Those two sources of funding you know, with the seed. Yeah. DARPA might have given, but they, you know, that came later. Was yeah. this late 70s then? That, when yeah, did they, they, it was started. And the meetings happened in 77, 78, and we got started the Robotics Institute in 79. And, uh, and I became the head of robotics because uh, I, I roughly knew what I wanted to do, but I was myself not competent to do them, right? You know. What were the first projects or prototypes? Or right. what, what the, did you the, set out the to? Two, the two big themes then were autonomous systems, the autonomous vehicle projects, and the drones, all of that came out of there. Okay. And uh, the other one is you know, ma manufacturing automation. So even the, the early on, we built systems you know, where what we call lights out manufacturing, where there was no human in being at all. In retrospect, I'm saying that's probably a bad design. You know, what you need is human machine manufacturing systems, right. where machines are doing all the boring and difficult and you know, dangerous things, and but still, its human being is there. The reason that becomes very important. You know, it, it, there was a very good example that came out. I don't know if you remember Taurus, when Ford introduced Taurus. This was mid-80s or something. And, and they built, you know, based on the advice we gave or something, they built fully autonomous system for making fenders. And, uh, and the, the car was selling like gangbusters and this autonomous system was not designed with human beings anywhere in the loop. So one thing broke down, everything came to a grinding halt. And there was no space for a human being to do the job that the machine was doing. And so what they did, did the manager of the factory do? He said, to hell with it, we're going to only use people and got rid of all of the <laughs> Yes, I didn't uh, know that story. Because you know, he, he's under pressure. He needs to deliver the, the fenders. 